Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Kendra Havens. Hey, Kendra. Hello. Welcome back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And we're going to talk about unit testing. Yeah. It's which the is unit not testing. the most exciting subject maybe people are thinking, but that's why you're Excuse on the show me? to add it some excitement. It's just because they don't know about all these cool features that's we've right. been cramming in. So, this is why we're here to talk about it. Unit testing is it's, <laughs> it's a tricky subject because it's like everybody knows you should do it. But what are the tools? How do you write unit tests, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera? We're going to do a, a series on that later on in the summer. But in the meantime, really? yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I'm going to build your pixie back on to do a, a series on unit testing. Excellent. Yeah. That'll but be in really the good. In the meantime, you're going to show us great tooling in Visual Studio. Yeah. So the purpose of unit testing is actually one of the first things I want to talk about. And I can okay. talk about our Roslyn team example. Then I'll go over learning resources that mm -hmm. people tend to miss a lot. And, and just in general, this whole episode will be about um, announcements that are really easy to miss during like conferences okay. and all of our big releases and in blog posts and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to be highlighting all of the ones that have to do with testing and more of a okay. focused. Cool. Okay. You get what I'm saying. So learning resources, um, latest testing improvements, I'll demo all of those, and then more of our Visual Studio testing tools that maybe we haven't talked about in a while okay. that I'd love to bring up again. Cool. Um, cool. So purpose of unit testing. I love using the Roslyn example. I work on the Roslyn team, which is the C Sharp and Visual Basic Compiler. Yep. So as many people know, we went open source uh, and we architected the compiler in a way to be extendable. So we wanted other community contributions. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, last year, 60% of .NET contributions were from open source. Mm. The only way our team could possibly keep up with that many PRs is through our tests. So we have 86,000 tests wow. on Roslyn. <laughs> Um, and learning uh, how changes were affected in a pull request, mm -hmm. looking at your tests is a great way to do that. Uh, so that's, it helps the reviewing experience a ton. Uh, so that's a really big example. That is our bread and butter on the Roslyn team like an is awful actually high having number tests. of tests, is it? <laughs> it is. Okay. <laughs> um, but you know, we got millions of people who use it and, and it's kind thousands of, of scenarios. It's kind of an important feature of the product, mm -hmm. C-sharp. It, it's definitely VB. paid yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. And with our team having those. It's the only way okay. we could have kept up with those changes. Right. So uh, here are the learning resources that I think a lot of people might have missed. I get a lot of questions about like, hey, how do you test legacy code? And I'm yeah. like, we've actually done an episode on that on Microsoft Virtual Academy. Uh, so yeah, just go to Microsoft Virtual Academy mm -hmm. um, and you can look up our uh, sessions on uh, testing legacy code and test-driven development. That's also a really nice one. A lot of people also miss that MS test and VS test are open source on GitHub. Okay. Um, so you can look at docs and issues and they're very informative, especially if you're running into a bug. Um, a solution actually might be on the repo or at least the discussion to know what's happening with it. So um, that's kind of a pivot. Like you could either go to developer community and just file the bug, but mm -hmm. if you're actually trying to like find the workaround or see if uh, we're already engaged with the community on that, there could be issues in those repos too. Okay. So that's really helpful. And the, of course, the, if you're using .NET test, uh, the .NET CLI is also all open source on GitHub. So that's a third repository cool. to look at. Uh, so very latest testing improvements, massive performance improvements. I've showed you a few of them before, yeah. but we'll go over to it and just focus on testing. A lot of that's due to real-time test discovery. It was the new source-based type of discovery that we checked in um, that no longer relies on assembly base, so it doesn't require a build. Pretty okay. cool. There's also been huge test framework improvements in in-unit, x-unit, and MS test. Oh, qualifier for this episode. It's probably going to be a lot of .NET focused stuff because that's my life. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn about C++ testing improvements, they actually wrote a blog post not too long ago with some of that, but that's what it is. <laughs> um, so I do want to urge big push to update your test adapters because uh, as you can see, execution, these are, this is in our labs, test execution of over 10,000 generated tests by Visual Studio Update by Framework. 
has gotten so mm -hmm. much faster. Mm -hmm. So just and t updating your test adapter is such an easy thing to forget to do because you're always focused on the framework version. You don't often think about the test adapter version, so please do that. It's awesome. Okay. And that's your test discovery time improvement as well. So just updating right. your test adapter there will also improve it a lot. Cool. So latest test experience improvements. We've got the hierarchy view in latest the test explorer. Being latest. As of when. Ooh, so the hierarchy view was added in 15.6. Okay. That update. Um, yeah, and that's all I <laughs> cover in this okay. slide. So it sorts your tests alphabetically and it organizes your tests by project namespace. So in other class. words, it's there now, it's not coming in the fabled 15.8. No, it's here. Excellent. It's here. It's been here for months and people love it. Cool. If they know to update to get it, because um, I still get requests. Uh, yeah, so we're still designing the hierarchy view and we're open for discussion, but okay. enough talk. Enough talk. Jeez, More that was demo. a lot of talk. Robert didn't want me to use a PowerPoint, but I was like, please, <laughs> what if people forget what I said because I talk too fast? <laughs> anyway, ooh, let's increase the front size there. Okay, so now you can see the Test Explorer over here, that's what I want you to call your attention to. So I have a large test project. If I go ahead and unload that project, you can see the Test Explorer will update automatically. Hmm. And if I reload it, it can discover 5,000 tests within just a few seconds. Ooh. Boom, done. Cool. Pretty sweet. So uh, I'll go ahead and use the, the hierarchy to go ahead and navigate. So this is my project namespace and my class. Um, and I can show you how the source-based discovery works. I can go ahead and add that test, and then it will also automatically appear right in the Test Explorer. Pretty sweet. And if you I change the name... don't have to build first? Don't have to build oh, first. Oh, <laughs> man. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty great. So if I comment it out, it will also then just that disappear. Is, that is extremely cool. Because in a large project like this, it can take some time to build. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just having that context and not mm -hmm. like, yeah, having to rebuild and then refine your test and then run it, right. big time saver. Cool. Uh, so yeah, what I also wanted to call out was um, this summary line is also something we added. So this is sort of a global view of how many tests are pro mm. in your project. Okay. And then it says two failed right up at the top of the test explorer as well. That was also a pretty popular customer ask. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to show you is um, updating your test adapters. Uh, that's really easy to do. Just uh, type in NuGet and open your NuGet package manager for your solution. And go ahead and type in test. Click on your test adapter and move to the latest stable. It is my high recommendation if you want some sweet, sweet performance improvements. OK. <laughs> OK. So. Next slide. Um, so I also get asked a lot, uh, how do we make writing tests easier? And I find a lot of people might have missed some of the awesome features that we've By checked in. <laughs> <laughs> By completely automating it. By completely automating it, right. Yeah, um, that shouldn't be too yeah, hard. That, that could be pretty easy, <laughs> um, especially if we've actually checked in that feature to Visual <laughs> Studio. So we always want to kind of bring more attention to it, especially when people ask me for it. So right-clicking and generating unit tests stubs for uh, .NET Framework projects. That's in all versions of Visual Studio. Okay. Just really easy test method stub generation. The stub. Yeah. Not the test itself. Yeah, the test How itself. How horribly difficult would that be, well, by the way? Uh, that brings me to our <laughs> next feature, IntelliTest. So this is also only for .NET Framework projects. Uh, and IntelliTest is only available in, in Enterprise. But that will actually generate and look at all of the logic in mm -hmm. your method and generate a test for each logic branch. Okay. And I can show you that in just a minute. All right, cool. And the next thing I'm going to call out is code coverage, also an enterprise-only feature, mm -hmm. uh, and how it can integrate into the VSTS pipeline. Cool. OK. So we'll escape PowerPoint again. Sorry. Ugh, now I feel like I'm using it way too much, <laughs> just because I know you're like grinding your teeth. Like, this Me. is a cool <laughs> conversational demo show. What are you doing, Kendra? Jeez, sorry. <laughs> OK, so. Your words, not mine, out loud. <laughs> Gosh, Kendra's the, the worst. OK. so. I can generate uh, or create unit tests, just the stubs, really easily, uh, but from the class or the method level. So I already have a home and controller test. And that's been in there test. for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. 
So I already have a home controller test class, but you know, again, it's easy to forget mm -hmm. these things. And we definitely get comments like, how do I discover all of these cool things in Visual Studio? Right. And we're working on it. You just did an episode with Justin with his tip of the day thing, right? Yep. That's another good way. Maybe I should get this in there. OK. Um, so let's say I already generated the tests for this class. And I just added a method. And I want to now create a stub for that method. I can also go ahead and append a generated test mm -hmm. um, to a file that already exists. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now it has my throw not implemented exception, and it just appended test to my method name. Super simple. You're already snoring. It's OK. Would, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just thinking that there that'd be nice to have an extension or a setting that automatically creates the unit test for you when you create the method in the first place. Ooh, I like that feedback. Yeah. I'm going to file that on developer. Can I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> OK, so the next thing I want to show you is um, IntelliTest. Now, uh, let me show you what this project does really quickly. So this we is did an episode on IntelliTest a couple of years ago, but exactly. I haven't really heard that much about so it since. So we want to talk about it more because yes. people ask me for better test generation. I'm mm -hmm. like, uh, have you checked out IntelliTest? And they're like, what's that? So I'm like, gosh, I got to go on one of those cool Channel 9 shows. Do you know of any? Just no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my obscure calculator. Um, so it's taking um, normal measurements mm -hmm. into obscure measurements, okay. like days to fortnights, miles to furlongs, et cetera. Uh, so pretty simple methods right now. Uh, and so IntelliTest wouldn't generate very interesting uh, tests for these methods. So let's look at a method that has a lot of branches in it. So this is my calculate trust method. This mm -hmm. is from the old adage, I only trust them as far as I can throw them. Right. <laughs> right, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Excellent demo code. But it does have a lot of bra uh, logic branches in it. So for every conditional branch in code, a case analysis performed in IntelliTest. So if statements, assertions, operations that mm -hmm. can throw exceptions, all of these are analyzed. This analysis is then used to generate test data for parameterized unit tests for each of your methods. This also gives you really high code coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and generate IntelliTest. So I'll create my IntelliTest right on here. On the X unit test project or on the obscure calculator? Oh, I don't think that's selected. It, it's going to generate a new test project in general for me. OK, but does it matter what solution is highlighted when you right click? No, it matters okay. where in the editor you right clicked from. OK. So, so I'm going to right click and <laughs> create IntelliTest. So I want to put this all in a new test project. So I will call it my generated project. And it will go ahead and run that analysis right now. So now you can see that it generated a .cs file, but it is actually, when I run IntelliTest, will generate more .g.cs files. And those are all of our generated classes. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that's going to run the tests that you created through IntelliTest, not your entire suite of both IntelliTest unit tests and other unit tests. Correct. Yeah, which, I can still use okay. the Test Explorer to do that. But right. yeah, right now, okay. definitely just focusing in on the IntelliTest. And you can actually see in the Test Explorer, I now have um, all of those tests that it just generated for me. Okay. And you can see they are kind of um, randomly generated names with um, exception numbering after it. Right. So uh, you can see in my solution, ex uh, Explorer that I ha now have that .g.cs file. Mm -hmm. And this is where all of those test cases live. So the test da data for this is generated every time I run IntelliTest. So I don't want to actually spend my time editing any of these files because they'll be overwritten when Created I rerun it. Created every time you run. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So how's the performance of that? Good. I, I'm not sure how often people will be regenerating yeah. everything, but you can rerun them without okay. regenerating your okay. tests. Sorry, I don't think I made that clear. Yeah, so um, you'll see uh, this .cs file is sort of the higher node of the test suite, and these all rely on the PEX method, um, 
which would be from the Microsoft PEX framework, which mm -hmm. was developed by Microsoft Research. Okay. Uh, so let's look at my results really quick. Looks like I have some divided by zero exceptions, some null reference exceptions. I have some problems with that code. Uh, luckily, I have a handy dandy code snippet because I'm a cheater. That's okay, right? You ain't <laughs> cheating if you've already written it. Uh, I don't, you don't need to watch me <laughs> throw out all of that stuff. This is basically just adding a null check and making sure that I'm not going to divide by the projectile person's weight, because okay. as long if it's zero. Uh, so now if I rerun those tests, and actually before I rerun, I do want to point out I have nine tests here right mm -hmm. now, seven of which are failing. I'll go ahead and rerun them. So IntelliTest is looking over my logic branches again. And since I don't have as many logic branches or cases that it mm -hmm. shows would cause a divide by zero error or something like that, you can see all my cool. tests Problem are passing solved. now, but I also only have seven because I changed the conditions uh, that were generating the test to begin okay. with. Oh, interesting. Pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, so that's basically IntelliTest. Um, IntelliTest also provides great code coverage. Uh, so it's an easy way to kind of check that box. And it would seem also to be a great learning tool to learn how to write unit tests and what should be in unit tests. That's right? a very good point. Yeah, so it kind of takes max and min values. Uh, and uh, just use cases and certain exceptions that you would throw and mm -hmm. kind of uh, figures out what is most likely to be uh, seen in this scenario. Right. So um, I'll go ahead and run code coverage in Visual Studio. That was just in test, analyze code coverage, all our selected tests. And uh, I'm not doing too great, but uh, let's look at specifically the conversion calculator, which is what I just generated um, the test for. And it's at 100% because it looked at the entire method as well as multiple blocks within oh. that method. Okay, so the ones that you have low numbers for were not the ones you created with IntelliTest. No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't run those okay. over uh, the other right. calculate the Fortnite for a long time. created would have much better coverage than like zero. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that was good. 100, which Excellent. is great. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good way to uh, bump okay. up your code coverage yeah. score. Very cool. So uh, if you want to get code coverage results in VSDS, that's actually really simple to do. Uh, just go to your build definition. So you can go to, whoops, actually, I'll just stay. Um, build and release. And oh, it gave me that message because I had been clicking in this. And you can hit this code coverage enabled button. Mm. And then it'll run co code coverage for you. Okay. And that'll be a part of uh, your report that you see on that build. So that's that's not relying on the IntelliTest, right? Or is it? No, the code coverage is a different tool that the okay. IntelliTest would help improve your code coverage score right. okay. for sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's just a. So the point Checking here is assemblies. yeah okay. that the code coverage you get in Visual Studio mm -hmm. uh, in local development you can also see in VSTS as part of your pipeline. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 So uh, one thing I also want to call out in VSTS is this newly added option. It's running only the impacted tests. So what are impacted tests? VSTS is actually able to look at your commits mm -hmm. and what code was actually changed and figure out which tests were affected by those oh, code changes cool. and only run those tests. Okay. So if you've only changed like four files and maybe like 30 tests were affected, mm -hmm. you don't need to run all 5,000, 86,000 of your tests. Uh, so it can save a lot of build time. Okay. Really nice feature. Cool. So, Speaking of only impacted tests, yes. let's talk about live unit testing. Let's. That's the last feature I want to talk about. OK. So if you haven't heard, live unit testing listens to your code changes and runs impacted tests in the background as you work. So test results are shown right in the code editor, mm -hmm. right beside your code um, in like line by line, line by line feedback. So this is an enterprise only feature. Uh, but the recent improvements that we've checked in 
are better performance and easier configuration. So if you had issues opening your easier project in the past with live uh, unit testing, I was, it could I just it was work. always pretty easy to begin oh, with. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, but I had some. I'm sure there were issues people were running into. Yeah, I can okay. share internally. Uh, we have like customers in office who have odd project types. Like, okay. Well, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> but they had configuration issues and live unit testing is just a lot smarter now and it can okay. easily uh, drop in the files that they need. So I asked them to retry it because they hadn't tried it out in a couple months and it just worked. Cool. Which is right. exactly the experience that we want. So I'd highly suggest just trying it out again <laughs> uh, if uh, you ever had any issues in the past. So it now supports MS Test V1 and .NET Core. Okay. Uh, we also added a task center notification, uh, which just gives more feedback on what live unit testing is doing in the background, um, as well as a skip category. Uh, you can include and exclude test projects, mm -hmm. and we now have test method icons, so they Ooh. pop out a little bit better. Uh, let me show you what all that means, though. Enough talk. <laughs> Okay, so I actually have a very large test project. That's uh, almost 5,000 tests. So I don't want to include it when I start live unit testing right off the bat. I only want to in include a certain test project. Mm -hmm. I can now go to the Solution Explorer, right click and only include that. So as you can see, my large test project isn't running in the background. Mm -hmm. It didn't try to re-execute or anything. Super helpful. Uh, another thing I called out earlier is, mm, Sorry, <laughs> is the chocolate, or sorry, the skip category. Yeah. And there we go. So my chocolate sentiment test, long story of why it's named that, is basically using Azure Cognitive Services uh -huh. to analyze the comments that a guest left in right. our Hotel 360 app. And if it was really negative, we'd ask housekeeping to leave a few more chocolates on their yeah, pillow okay. to sweeten the deal. But since this is Azure Cognitive Services, I didn't want that test running every single time I made a code edit because that's right. way too you often. Didn't feel like I could probably rack like up a bill. Like it out and make, doing a mock either. Right. So you can just so, say, don't run it. Yeah, I can okay. just add the test category, oh. skip when live unit testing. And now I have a little empty beaker instead of the usual oh, that's cool. beaker so at test method just, icons. Okay, so you don't have to go to that and explicitly exclude that. You can just say always skip it. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and show you uh, how live unit testing works really quick. Um, let's say I have a few failing tests. I can click on the icon in the editor. I can hover over the test that's failing and actually yep. read the error message. Uh, if I click on it, I can actually debug this test to learn more about why I'm getting a null reference, though I'm pretty sure it's this one me string message that I'm using. So I can go ahead and add, yep, message was null. So I'll go ahead and add a null check for that. And I can do that using our handy dandy uh, oh. code fix for it. And of course, I can highlight and drag it where I want. And we'll do that. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. Let's only run message.normalize if message is not null. And you can see in the background while I was editing, live unit testing was rerunning those tests mm -hmm. when I typed. So now I can see that all things are passing and I feel way better. Cool. <laughs> and then of course you can turn it off for that uh, method while you're writing it. I could, and yeah. And then if you're... I could have added a skip category right here. You can Absolutely. also right, you can right click and do it as well? Is that uh, right? No, the right clicking was for excluding certain projects. Oh, so at okay. the method level, we have categories, so you don't like lose track of them. Uh, but for projects, since oh, they're oh, much bigger oh, blocks, we just okay. have right clicking in the Solution Explorer. Got it. And okay. we want to be able to better navigate what tests are and are not a part of live unit testing, maybe with like a new group by in the test explorer, but mm -hmm. we're working on it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool. So those are testing improvements. Mm -hmm. I shared new resources for learning why we should be testing. We talked about IntelliTest, code coverage, and live unit testing. Sweet. And now my life is happy. <laughs> <laughs> so let me make it more let me make it difficult. Oh so, okay. <laughs> uh, we had we had talked about IntelliCode. 
yeah. uh, which is the AI inside Visual Studio. So one could imagine a world um, in the hopefully not too distant future where as you are writing code, Visual Studio is writing your complete set of unit tests for you. Is that, that is something I is could that definitely something? imagine. Okay. I think we'd still want, because um, I think the organization of tests within test projects is really important to people mm -hmm. because they probably already have a way of, like, even when I was right clicking and generating a test method stub, it asked me, what project do you want us to put that in and right. what class? I think that aspect is really important, and I'm not sure if we're ready to decide how everyone's architecting their test project solutions. So if um, I have a choice between doing all that myself or having Visual Studio do it for me, and then I'm not that crazy about the test hi project hierarchy it is, that's a pretty small price to pay. Oh, you think? <laughs> yeah. I think. Hmm. Gosh, trying to please everyone. That's, yeah. the, that's the real gotcha. Um, yeah, we're definitely taking a look at how to make test generation a lot easier mm -hmm. um, because that is always a top ask in the testing space. Right. Uh, so I'd love to incorporate more IntelliCode-like features yeah. and actually use um, machine learning that, because IntelliCode is a lot different from IntelliTest in that IntelliCode looked at 2,000 open source .NET right. repositories that were out in the world. And IntelliTest is just sort of more of a uh, logical analysis analysis of what cases you might hit mm -hmm. and what would be good test data to plug right. in. But if we took both of those and combined yeah. them, like I test, I'd probably you know, get a promotion. Method, parentheses, <laughs> string, message, right? Yeah. Right then and there, Visual Studio goes, oh, well, I wonder what happens if mm -hmm. the message is null. Oh, I wonder what happens if, you know, whatever. There's a couple things. I mean, IntelliTest is doing that, right? Yeah. In one big uh, pass when I run it, um, I'm just thinking that you, it would be cool if you had that kind of going on at the same time. I agree. In Think a future we'll version. Keep working on it. <laughs> Stay tuned for Visual Studio 2019. <laughs> yeah. Is it, that's not a promise, though. No. All right. Did it sound like a promise? <laughs> no, it didn't. I can't make promises. It didn't. <laughs> I'm just a PM, guys. <laughs> cool. So cool stuff. Thanks. And again, all that stuff is shipping today. Are yeah, there additional enhancements that, that we live. might see in 15.8, 15.9? Oh, I didn't prepare any future looking right. stuff. Mm, yeah, we're thinking of, we're always thinking about better test explorer design. Okay. Hmm. So stay vague about it. Okay. <laughs> cool. But yeah, there's a lot of uh, asks that we've gotten, especially um, m uh, targeting multiple frameworks and how the Test Explorer handles them today mm -hmm. is not ideal. Okay. Um, so that's a popular ask. So getting a new like group by that is by uh, multi TFM or something like that could be really helpful. All things we're thinking about it, no promises. Okay. <laughs> and then what's uh, the state of, of how this works with .NET Framework versus .NET Core? And what about potentially other languages you might be using? Uh, yeah, a top ask is for making IntelliTest work for .NET Core, because mm -hmm. I did mention it's only for .NET Framework right, right. now. Um, that's definitely something we're thinking about in uh, the 2019 timeframe. Okay. All right. It's on our plate. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, I'll keep you posted. All right. <laughs> I'll have you back when this up in the show, for yeah. sure. Thanks for doing this. Thanks. Yeah, this is fun. Thanks Hope for having me. Hope you enjoyed me. that, and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.